Welcome everyone to a fraud detection use case uh, demo walk along or follow through or follow along however you call it. Uh, this is the version 2 of this use case. I had a previous video recording for this uh, for this too uh, but this is an updated version. Uh, we have made some changes to the use case like um, the execute federated query and materialized views uh, we have added those things and uh, I've fixed the resolution in um, OPS um, this is more this is going to be a lengthy video and um, um, <coughs> probably 30 minutes or 40 30 to 40 minutes so grab a cup of coffee or something if you but at the end of this you would know about roads uh, not everything about roads it's a it's a bigger project uh, uh, product uh, but parts of it and uh, starburst and model serving and open wino um, all of these uh, things so if you're absolute new you can you will pick up some some things here if you are already in this field of, uh, of um, AI and ML probably you will have a nice use case to demo to your customer or a potential customer or just play by yourself um, I'll stop talking and uh, and I will bring the blog which my manager and I wrote uh, yeah so this is the blog which is associated to this uh, to this uh, uh, video and uh, this use case and you can read more over here it will explain what we have done I'm gonna replace this video with the one which I'm recording right now this is the older video but the last link over here will take you to the github repository and uh, oh. and so this repository is the base repository for this uh, workshop our use case and you can if you don't have access to demo.redhat.com or rhdp then you will be bringing your own cluster in that case if you are you will have to install certain things in it there are some prerequisites the config folder tells you about all of that what you have to install make sure that you uh, you also need to bring the starburst license uh, um, if you have your own if you bring your own OCP cluster so you probably have to get a trial license or something or contact uh, starburst for that um, your Postgres credentials which you have to deploy and then get credentials and your Amazon S3 bucket uh, or Amazon credentials this will be used for uh, we will be creating an S3 bucket and read our data source or sorry our data set from there so you're getting used to the terminologies um, yeah, but the best part is if you have access to RHDP, I would highly recommend you to deploy the workshop, which most of these overhead, which is associated with this workshop, I have automated using an Ansible, um, an Ansible script. The workshop link is over here. If I click on it, it will take me to the workshop. Um, and basically I click on order I'm using my activity as practice uh, you can use your own um, but remember some of them you need to provide the Salesforce ID otherwise this will uh, remain grayed out most important thing is to make this an open environment 
US East 2 region I confirm and um, now I'm gonna um, order this and this will take about I don't know it will take about 30 to 40 or maybe an hour to deploy an OCP cluster for me and then it will run my Ansible script to do all the overheads, the pre prerequisites like roads, starburst, config, deploy them, install them, install them, configure them according to my, the needs of this workshop. Once all of that is done, <coughs> I will. Uh, I'll. Uh, once all of that is done, I will come and. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna un, uh, pause this video now, but once all of that is done, I'm gonna come back and then we will uh, continue from there. Thank you. Okay, welcome back everyone. So our cl uh, cluster is uh, the uh, RHDP cluster, our workshop is now deployed and we can continue with our uh, workshop let me just get myself out of the screen and put this on and, uh, great so and is it still recording yes good good so this is our base repository and uh, this is where we had scheduled it was provisioning now it is status is running and uh, uh, so here because we enable open uh, environment we are getting our aws uh, access key id aws uh, secret key and all of these all of these information is also emailed to you the the email which uh, using which you did uh, deploy this workshop some key things which you will see which i have added over here is the starburst query editor link which is this is the link for that and the aws bucket which was created uh, by the workshop uh, yeah, so these are the two important things, which uh, just uh, are three actually. These two, uh, this, and this. Uh, keep a note of it. So I have this page open on one, some side uh, in in one tab, and then then uh, head over to the OpenShift console. And uh, also for AWS key, just keep a note that these uh, these keys are only valid as long as your cluster is there, and it's a pretty a formal cluster so it's gonna uh, delete itself uh, there's some auto destroy auto stop so um, so these keys are no good after a certain point in time and uh, but just keep in mind not to expose these keys so let's log in and, uh, it is the login credentials so we log in as cluster admin here da, 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 da. So we are in. The next thing we are going to do is uh, just just hover over, over and uh, take a look at uh, at the see this is this is what the the operators are installed or not. So the roads is installed. Starburst uh, Enterprise Helm operator is installed too. Um, there wouldn't be anything here. I'm not. But in the Starburst section, I do expect uh, some. I do expect some uh, some instances yes and there is the starburst hive instance and starburst enterprise instance um, which are initialized and deployed let's check the resources yes all of them deployed and running that's a one thing to note here though that because the how red, red demo platform is uh, is is set up which is it has an auto stop feature um, and how 
Starburst licensing is concerned, uh, the license is deleted from the cluster after deploying the workshop. So if your uh, OCP cluster or this workshop stops, then when you restart it, or stops or pauses or whatever, and then when you restart it, it you will have these pods in pending or config error or something like that because they will be looking for the secret which is not there uh, so that's why make sure that you kind of do maybe non-stop it's not advisable to do non-stop but uh, you can take responsibility of it uh, but make sure you don't you know spend too much on the cloud fees here um, and if that that is something which is concerning then what you can do is um, you can contact uh, the starburst uh, uh, partner from within red hat uh, there are a few people who represent starburst and uh, ask for the license from them and once you get the license from them you basically need to create a secret uh, which this this deploy uh, or where is it this deployment is kind of referring to uh, the deployment is referring to let's look at the YAML file yeah so this is the this is the uh, license which which uh, sorry not that this is the guy and the secret name is starburst data so you can create a secret name starburst data and uh, and just insert your basically this this guy over here if you go to config um if you go to config then uh, starburst license uh, this is the this is the thing which you need to create in your cluster all of it is there you just need to install insert the uh, license which you receive from uh, our partner uh, starburst or anyone you know who has the license uh, or demo license or anything or if you receive or if you sign up by your I, I believe they have one for the for people who visits their website but I'm not too sure um, that's that's a little uh, information there but let's go back and so all of this is good over here so we'll head over to the red uh, the um, roads uh, dashboard or odh or roads dashboard whatever however you call it let's paste it admin it's the same username password which you see over here it's the authentication um yeah good so we are over here now let's do one thing let me put this as a side like this and let's see if that works uh, hmm. Surprisingly, it doesn't work. Hmm. How can I add another window capture? Can I? Okay, let's let's skip that part. But basically, what I was trying to do over here is have to is wanting to have both of uh, the the dashboard and. Uh, and the github repository side by side but i am a little bit technically challenged here I'm not a video expert or how to do all of this all right yeah so but but point which i'm trying to do is all the steps which i would be doing now are mentioned over here as step one and what you need to do step two step three all the way up to here so I will refer back uh, uh, back and forth to this repository as I move forward. All right. Okay. So the first step is is to create a data science project. So da -da -da, credit card fraud. Create this guy. Then the next step is to create a workbench, which I do. The inst image which I would be sele is selecting notebook images TensorFlow everything whatever is recommended small size da, 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 da. use a data connection mm -hmm. uh, this is something new I haven't used it you connecting data connection through my workbench but yeah someday I will explore it so so right now I'm just leaving it unchecked I'll create the workbench um, 
so we have come up to from step one to yes so um, we are over here at step two okay um, so we'll wait for this open uh, to be this guy to be let's look at the event log um, yeah okay I don't know how long it's gonna take uh, I would assume it takes a minute or two uh, but since I don't know so I will uh, just pause the video and come back when uh, this is deployed okay so our uh, workbench is ready now and we can start working on it so like you can see it's uh, you instead of starting and you now it says uh, open so we click on it and again it's gonna ask you for the username and password which we received over here and this e uh, this is also in your email just in case if you lost it there is some authorization allow selected permissions great so we have our notebook now and let's go back to this we have all of this we did allow all the next thing is to clone the repository so we'll just go ahead click on this which will copy the link clone repository paste over here clone takes a second great now we have that, all of that and our repos and our notebook so now we don't necessarily have to go back and forth with the uh, with the, the readme that much because most of the instructions are over here there and all the readme, rest of the readme files are over here too uh, so I'll just start by executing the requirements file it uh, yeah there are a few if you are, if you're curious what it installs it installs these stuff here and um, those are uh, the on is needed for um, for us to get the I think it's for one of the uh, I forget for something which we are doing later uh this is for the imbalance algorithm which we are which we are going to use which is called the smote the smote the uh, that that comes from there uh, and uh, yeah anyway so next we'll just uh, run the imports here, uh, TensorFlow is usually very chatty and give, will give you a lot of uh, errors, uh, uh, sorry, not errors, but warnings and stuff. So this is going to reduce the number of warnings which we are going to receive. The next is, um, this particular cell is actually going to make the, look, uh, the graphs and everything um, look pretty. But... Um, Let's look into the data set which we have. Yeah. So this is the data set. This is where I got the data set from, in from one of these links, uh, I think. And some of the work, we, uh, uh, a lot of it is from here. Some of the, uh, only the differences, I think, the way they are doing the balancing is different from what I'm doing here. I rather followed this other blog, uh, which is doo -doo 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 -doo. yes, this blog by Sarah Bescher. Uh, this blog I have followed. Um, oh no, I can't see it. I need to sign in, but. But uh, this blog is a little um, is is older, and uh, a lot of functions and uh, things are are no more uh, have been changed with the newer uh, versions. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's quite it's three years old. Um, 
but it uses the same data set which we are using uh, yeah anyway um, if you want to read more about what we are doing in uh, in this uh, workshop then you can you can head over to the blog which I had it open earlier yeah the, here we are talking about uh, what wh what's going on in the uh, in, in this whole use case so if you need more uh, but I will carry on with just the not much explanation of the data set or anything uh, I'll just explain the little bit which is needed for uh, for our uh, for, for this follow along so this data set it's a credit card data set uh, which has these uh, 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 columns sorry that took me a while to and I don't know how to scroll. There is more actually on that side. There's one more called class. And each columns represent, each row represent uh, uh, a transaction. And uh, the, um, this V1, V2, all this time, these are all my variables and my output uh, or uh, my output is the class uh, that's that's my uh, feature uh, if I see um, yes so basically based on these columns um, what we are trying to do is we would be trying to uh, our model should try to uh, predict the class in future in future when we provide a, a transaction which has all these variables uh, and it will predict the class for us that said so now the, this data set is a bit uh, there are few the original data set was clean but we, uh, we have added some uh, some just empty values just to mimic that we are doing some pre-processing to do that I have uh, we have this uh, starburst uh, readme file and this is where uh, the starburst comes into play so note that all of these steps in the beginning are optional if you're using the demo platform um, all of this is optional the only thing which we will we will straight ahead and jump to these queries which we are going to execute in uh, in Starburst. So we head over to the Starburst query editor link. Um, just give it a name and then click over here. We, you should already see this Postgres and S3. Uh, thing to note here is before in version one of this day uh, of this uh, demo all of the uh, data set was in s3 but now we have split that data set and and we have kept part of it in s3 and part of it in postgres uh, the reason why we have done it in this way so that we can show you a federated query and then create a materialized view of bringing both of it together so let's view how, how all of this uh, would work so let's go over to I'm gonna close this guy I'm gonna also close this guy just so that I don't know so the first thing is to create a schema well for the schema for we need to create a schema for s3 here so that we are able to read a oh, good thing to note here that if you want to check the data set in S3, basically you head over to either you can uh, use the AWS uh, um, AWS CLI or you can head over to the web console 
and in this web console this is your username which you can use and this is the password which you can use and once you sign in you will be able to see that uh, the workshop has already put into where is it s3 has already uh, submitted uh, the data set or uploaded not submitted uploaded here's the uh, bucket name which matches with what we see here and if you go inside that you will see data folder and data folder has feature.csv file and that's part of the that's one part of the original data set um, yeah anyway so to access this guy in starburst or to read we will have to create a schema we'll replace that and to press and enter uh, control and enter and then we'll go back so that the schema creation the next is we'll have to create the table within that schema so that we can so that we can um, re, uh, do a select statement and we visualize the data so da da control enter done so the next task is now we are going to verify that i can read from that oops i'm going to close this guy too i don't need it i will need this guy later so i'm going to keep that enter enter paste Control Enter. Yeah, so you can see. So one thing which we also have done is we have added an ID field, uh, which is why we have. That's how we have modified uh, the data set. And I know this in the in in the, uh, machine learning you shouldn't use the ID in the in data set. The only reason we have this ID is so that we can run our join command, which you will see later. And once the join command is run, you will see that over here we are dropping off the ID from our uh, data frame or yeah from. Uh, Yes, we are we are dropping the ID column from our data frame, but so need, don't worry that we are using the ID field uh, to train a machine learning model. And moreover, this 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 workshop or use case is not to make is not for to make the perfect model. It's more to show what we can what we can do with the help of a interactive engagement with the user. Uh, or let's say power user who know a little bit about commands and this and that okay so we can see we can read from s3 so this is the section of where we have v1 v1 to all the way to v28 what we do not have in this part of the data set is is um, time and class you will see that is there in That is there in uh, oh, actually, that's not so. Uh, we don't have a command for that over here, but let, let me do something like select star from um, Postgres. Is it no? Yes, public dot transactions. Okay, so we'll do Postgres dot public dot. 
So Postgres is our data source. This is our schema. And this is our table transactions. This is it here. Transactions is our table. Oh, there is two S. One. Like you can see that we have our our the the second portion of the data set, which is which has time, amount, and class. Class. We'll later see in this uh, demo that this is the one which we would be basically will rename this zero means not fraud, one means fraud. Uh, anyway, so we we saw both of our uh, the two section of the same data set. Next, let's do now is this is the most important command in this whole workshop, which is going to demonstrate to you two things. One, it is going to do a federated query which is a query which has two different sources one in the in our case one is s3 and the other one is postgres and uh, and then it is creating a materialized view of that uh, of those two data sources and you will see how that when this is done now when we query this the uh, query this materialized view we will be able to see uh, we'll be able to see the data uh, the full after the join how the total data set look like so to query that we'll do it something like this come back to paste Yes, features was our original data, and uh, S3 is uh, the one which we created. Yeah, that's what we have it here. Go control and enter. Now let's see, you have the V1 to V2, all of that, all the way up to v28 and then you have time amount and class great so we have successfully executed the federated query and a materialized view i think our task over here is done yes so that's all the commands which we would be running here now we are heading over to our notebook and we'll continue so we per did this part the next is we would be using the uh, we will be connecting using uh, con uh, we will be connecting from our notebook to the starburst um, host so let's run that and now the next thing is basically here we are reading it in this way and it's not only reading that the raw data frame. Uh, we are using pandas to read SQL. We are then uh, performing this uh, draw because we don't want the ID column when we are training our model. Give it a. I think this come out. Yeah, oh, it's, it's done. Uh, the next thing is we will be changing some of the uh, data types uh, because of whatever reason pandas was not able to understand so we'll have to convert that actually okay I remember because when we did uh, this it got imported as uh, object data type which was giving us a hard time in this command and subsequent commands. Anyway, let's go, let's go ahead and run this uh, uh, sh shell or cell and 
then run our describe command we can see the count mean this is the this is the description of the whole data set which we have and if I go back oh actually even in that classification you should be I just don't know why I'm not able to scroll horizontally over here. It is supposed to scroll horizontally. I know there is more stuff. I don't know, sometimes Chrome acts weirdly. Anyway, um, yeah. Basically, the reason I wanted to show you this is because what you see over here would be same as what you see over here. Next. Uh, what we are doing over here is we are trying to get we are renaming class column to is fraud like I was saying I gave you a little sneak peek earlier that we would rename that as is fraud if it is zero means it's not fraud if it is fra uh, fraud then it's one and uh, after renaming what we did we were calculating the percentage of fraud in this data set and it appears to be 0.17% which is of the whole data set is fraud this is why this data set is called an imbalance data set set and now subsequently some of the next tasks which we are going to do would be to to balance the number of fraud in the data set and the number of non-fraud in the data set so that otherwise our model will be trained in a, it will be a bias model it will not have enough uh, learning about fraud uh, and it won't be uh, able to predict nicely and there's different ways to do it I have used the smote s-m-o-t-e technique we, uh, yeah anyway oh yeah so let's look for missing data we don't have any missing data and the reason we don't have any missing data and what what i'm calling as missing data is basically some rows which has empty values some in some of the rows there are few columns which have empty values that's what i'm calling as a missing data and the reason it is zero over here because we earlier performed all of this uh the these over here the special specifically this command which excludes which basically removes all the empty rows because those I am considering in this in this uh, model training as mm, as dirty data or uh, yeah basically this is what I am calling it as pre-processing next is um, we will check a correlation plot, uh, pl uh, graph plot uh, which will show us how different uh, columns are connected to each other um, I'm no data scientist so I understand little but uh, data scientists who are, who are expo exposed to data science and uh, machine learning probably understands better um, the next part is uh, we are defining the x and y variables uh, like I was saying, um, and I, I'm, I'm trying to remember, I'm using the terms feature set and variable as the right thing here. Okay, yes, so like Y is what we are trying to predict and uh, X is, uh, is our feature set which is the values which we know and uh, using those we would try to predict why. Next we are doing some standardization um, x train y x train x test y train y test uh, this is where we are applying this mode uh, technique this graph shows us uh, that now we have equal number of fraud and equal number uh, sorry this is fraud uh, and equal number of non-fraud uh, 
in our data set after applying this more technique earlier it was only 0.17 percent of once here right next we are using deep neural network dnn and uh, ah, these are the layers uh these layers um uh, I have taken them from uh, the blog which I showed earlier. Uh, they have done some R and D, and the the these number of layers and dropouts uh, give a good result. That is why there is this many number of layers. So let's run that. So this is our model summary. The next part is the matrices and the training part, uh, the most impo important, and they compile and fit. Uh, so epoch, the higher the number is, the better or the, uh, the more accurate it is. But 100 will take a long time to train uh, with the amount of resources I've given to this cluster or this cluster has. So I will just uh, put, uh, put it down to five and uh, so there will be only five uh, epoch instances. Um, yeah, so we'll give this uh, like it, it takes, 100 will take usually, I don't know, it has taken 30 minutes or 40 minutes for me sometimes. Uh, five will take two to three minutes. So I'll pause the video here and uh, come back when it's done. Okay, wonderful. Now that uh, the five uh, five epochs are done, we can see the summary over here that uh, test loss is this much, uh, one point two percent, and uh, test accuracy is twenty six percent. Precision or precision is sixty nine percent, and recall is eighty five percent, which is pretty expected as you let it continue more and towards 100 you will see that the precision increases recall decreases accuracy improves um, yeah but uh, for the um, sake of time we are doing less um, but like uh, I want to remind that this is not uh, this this use case is not to make the perfect model it's more to just demo the features here Okay, so now that we have trained our model, so we have a model, and let's save that model. We use TensorFlow framework, and let's save that model, and after saving it, we'll save it in the folder called TensorFlow PB models. Uh, we are going to use model optimizer, which is a binary provided by OpenVINO, to convert it into OpenVINO IR format, which is, which basically makes the model remove some dead neurons and uh, it's, a, it's a performance optimization and also uh, it will uh, later when we are serving the model it will help us to use that um, that format open vino IR format is what is supported I think now maybe they do support other uh, formats to serve in roads or if the work is going on but but uh, we will convert it on to into excuse me open vino ir here so let's go ahead and do that Okay, so TensorFlow assets were written over here. Like we see that there are two uh, folders were created. This has the all the PB models saved, and then we used a MO to create uh, uh, OpenVINO convert that model to OpenVINO IR, and these are the three files which were created. Now the next step is this step. That uh, is because when we would be serving, we would be what we would be doing is we would create a data connection here, which is fill in all the details and uh, connect to S3, 
and our model will reside in S3 and then we will be solving that model a reading from S3 we will be solving it I do think that they, it creates a local instance a uh, local copy of it for serving it uh, but yes that's that's the way so uh, we, we have followed again all of this information what we are doing here will be there in uh, the blog so that you know what's going on okay did my okay my chrome froze for a second there so this particular uh, guide is optional and the reason it's optional is because uh, all of this uploading uh, we will do using this guy uh, and um, however this will will be needed to be done by uh, by people who are not using a demo.redhat.com okay so so let's go ahead and the reason the other people would be needing to do this because for them I would not know the bucket name and secret key and all of that so they need to they can do it manually or they can use the script if they put in this in these information so for us what applies is we I'm going to key, uh, copy this access key no. oh. and paste it here copy this to paste this secret here and the next thing is I need the pocket name which is this guy oh. mm. too many tabs and then I'll paste it here now when we run this shell what will happen is uh, this will in our uh, um, S3 bucket it will create a folder called model default one and it's gonna upload uh, this guy these three files in there so let's go ahead and run that it's done let's go ahead and check that if it was done so when we come over here let's refresh this guy Uh, we have a models folder now it has default and it has the version one and these are the three files which we had it is up in in the s3 bucket which is this guy so so the model is now in s3 the next we will have to follow some steps here in this guide to create the data connection and then do uh, deploy uh, configure a more uh, server model server and deploy a model so let's do those things let's add a data connection let's give it a name something CC access key again let's copy these guys all to here uh, da, 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 da. Uh, da. endpoint endpoint do we have an endpoint? Yes, we use the US S2 HTTP. Mm. So let's do HTTP colon forward slash forward slash S3 dot US East 2 dot. This is the new uh, format that we. Uh, Mm, endpoints are done back uh, back in days uh, the legacy format is s3.8 amazon uh, e and amazon aws.com was just s3.amazonaws.com the new one is you need to the format is you need to put uh, punch in your um, region in the url itself amazon aws.com I don't know if that matters, but I'll just throw it in. I don't need, it's not a required field bucket. That's where I will see this guy. So hopefully this works. I'm not connecting it to any workbench because I don't need to. 
So the object storage is uh, now there. Now let's add a server. Let's name it this. Runtime. We will use OpenVINO model server and um, and oh, things might have changed a little bit here. Before there was nothing called runtime. So this screenshot is a or this GIF is a little bit old. Um, click uh, make sure you make it uh, externally routable this uh, click on that link and then and here so that we configured our model server the last part is to deploy a model in our server let's name it this model framework oh see look they are now using tensorflow uh, as a tensorflow 2 or which is api version 2 i think as a, as a, one of the model framework so that's good so this conversion which we did over here is not necessarily needed uh, you can directly use uh, just upload the pb file um, but it's good to do this conversion because i i don't know a lot but i what i've heard is this is just a performance boost and it's good um, to do that, open my OIR format is good. Um, so we'll, since we have already done it, we'll come over here. Existing data connection, yes, it's CC model path. This is where we're going to say models. Let's actually copy that. Uh, models data copy and paste. Looks good. Let's click on deploy. If everything goes well here, up to this point. We should see this part being deployed. So it's just a waiting game. Again, I will pause the video, and once it's deployed, I'll uh, come back and um, continue from there. Thank you. Okay, so I have an error over here which is it says uh, failed to pull model from storage due to error unable to list objects in bucket fraud detection that's missing region so uh, now that i have missed uh, i see that error um, i will actually go back and edit this and i will put this region i'm guessing that's the problem and update the data connection after updating that, I'm going to go back here, delete this guy, and I will try to redeploy the model. delete the whole model server for doing that I think so, so probably I'm gonna delete this whole thing and then delete the delete the model server actually that would probably make more sense because the model server is what is attached to uh, okay, now let's go over here and deploy to the open shift side of things just to check if things are working the way to do that would be come to over here and every data science project you know, in our case Eric got for the name that is the guy who with that name there is a 
namespace and um, in that namespace there will be workloads and for uh, my model server I will have this deployment and uh, so apparently it is running it just says it's just started right now all of that um, let's check for some logs Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, that model. There is a place where it shows that it's. Hmm. Okay, well, look at that. So, our status is loaded. However, we are missing the inference point. I don't know why. Let's refresh this page. Maybe it will, it will appear. Yeah, there, there it is. So our model is deployed now, and we have also got the inference point. We just click on copy, and um, we don't need these guys anymore. And um, we'll come over here. So we followed this uh, guide, and uh, to how to do the model serving or uh, and deployment, we'll copy paste our inference link here, and. And I have a sample request uh, with all the value with the data over here, and I will see if it can. Pre what does it, I will see what it predicts when we run this uh, cell. So it predicts that it's it's a not a fraud. So uh, that's what our model predicts. But I think if we go and uh, train our model more with more epochs uh, like probably close to 90 or 80 and there is more accuracy and that's when I think this particular data set if I remember correctly is actually it should predict um, as, as, as one which is it's a fraud uh, so that's the whole uh, uh, workload uh, sorry no workshop not workload workshop and uh, the use case and i hope you guys enjoyed this is uh, a bit of an extra stuff here you can uh, um, we'll, we'll do some fun stuff here which is we'll get an accuracy score says the accuracy score is 99 percent which is <laughs> not right uh, but if we look at the uh, f1 score that's when we see that uh, it's 76 percent so which is out of 10 times, seven times you will be right, three times you will be wrong, I guess. Um, and last bit is this is the confusion matrix. Um, yeah, people who work in uh, data science, they know uh, all of this. I think what I understand from this confusion mat matrix is um, fraud and predicted ripple. So these 12 are the problematic one, which is it in real in in reality 12 of the transactions were fraud but they were predicted as non fraud uh, so that is problematic uh, for uh, the number of tra uh, true label which were fraud and were predicted as fraud was 69 of them number of non fraud which were predicted as non fraud is this that's fine number of non fraud uh, which were predicted as fraud is 30. So this is fine. Non frauds if they are predicted as fraud, that's still fine. It's a it's a false positive kind of thing. Uh, but but it's still okay. You as a bank or as a financial institution, you're not going to lose money on that. But um, or or as an individual, you're not going to lose on that. What you need to consider is this guy. But these are all bonus stuff. This is our model is not perfect. Uh, like we like I mentioned earlier this is not about the model it's more about the whole uh, usability and looking at the features and all of that anyway thank you thank you so much everyone for uh, being with me here and um, and um, and doing this uh, follow along with me
hopefully you made it till the end and uh, thank you take care bye bye